uh, and welcome then to the Untold Stories of Women in Tech uh, panel. Uh, so then today we have like a really group, uh, a good group of inspiring women who have been working together or on their own to break barriers and on a mission to successfully build their own startups. Uh, I've worked alongside two of them uh, previously uh, and it's great then to meet you Kaiser and have you on the line. But yeah, basically today we are just going to like use this panel discussion to explore a lot of the experiences and challenges or the strategies that you guys have uh, for success uh, up until now. And then I really like extend my warmest welcomes to everyone. And uh, I hope that we can have a really great like conversation. Uh, feel free to really let it, like let everyone know on like the different things that you think about all the different questions, but uh, I don't want to take the, more time from this. Uh, and yeah, I think we can start off by maybe having everyone introduce himself, um, but then uh, maybe Kia, you can go first and then we can move from there. Yeah, thanks. Hi. Uh, I'm, so I'm Kia. I'm a co-founder in Cisco and uh, Cisco is a femtech startup and our product, um, we're de developing a product that guides women through hormonal changes. Uh, and this is for women that are in age 35 to 50, where they start to notice changes in their bodies. Uh, and we are soon launching our first version in WhatsApp. Uh, and there we communicate with the customers so that we can optimize their health in their everyday life. And we want to add knowledge about women's health, their cycles, all the changes that they go through in their lives. They're, and there are actually eight changes usually. And if, if there's pregnancies, then of course there's many more. Um, and I'm also from my background, a medical doctor and a gynecologist. And I have lived in Sweden for 10 years and moved back to Finland for two years ago. And I did my residency in Sweden in Karolinska. Uh, university hospital and um, I also have my own uh, Instagram account where I'm sharing information about all this uh, amazing uh, biolo biology and all the amazing stuff women's bodies can do. That's me shortly. Thanks for that. I think we can go next with Helen. Yes. Hi, I'm I'm Helena. Um, do you hear me well? I must ask. Yeah, um, I'm a serial a serial entrepreneur from Finland, and uh, I've been founding several companies and organizations. Uh, Slush is probably the most well known startup event, uh, but then also the first social media agency in Finland and the first blogger platform in Finland. And now I'm um, I'm a founder and CEO of Prana which is a knowledge as a service platform. I call myself a business creative because I have studied in, in Helsinki School of Economics. So I'm a master of economics, but I have also studied in art university in, in Helsinki. And, um, but I never graduated from there, but I'm this kind of business creative person. And um, I've been doing uh, many board uh, or a lot of board work lately. And uh, I was selected as the uh, young board member of the year uh, 2022 in Finland. And currently I'm in, in two boards. Um, one is uh, um, Bodelia listed company in Helsinki Stock Exchange. And then another one is Luonkos, a natural cosmetics company. I'm also a mom of two kids, seven and nine years old. And uh, yeah, maybe a couple of words about Prana. Um, I mentioned that it's a knowledge as a service platform. Um, on our platform, we have more than 3000 uh, professionals, advisors. So we help people to find the right matches of professionals so that they can book sessions with them on our platform, on, with our video uh, platform, and then also pay for the sessions. And Currently, I'm super excited because we are uh, working on AI on the top of this. So AI is going to help in the matching and also help in streamlining the process. So currently, we are testing it and soon we can launch it. Yeah, uh, excited to see the development that you guys have done in the last uh, few years. But yes, uh, and then I think Kaiser, 
is our last uh, panel individual. Great. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, maybe morning, uh, evening for some. I don't know. There were a few participants out there. Great to have you here, and, and thanks for inviting me to this uh, panel. I am Kaiza, and I'm the founder and CEO of Talbot, a platform uh, that visualizes the organization's skills, uh, creates skill gaps for people, and then helps close them with um, automated and, and goal-oriented growth plans. I have a strong background in IT. Um, I've worked mainly with SAP in, in different countries, uh, companies and uh, as a consultant, but uh, the story of Talbot goes into all these years and, and years as an employee uh, and a growing, it's, it's sort of a result of a growing frustration towards my personal development and kind of uh, not really finding opportunities to utilize my full potential in the organizations or understand really, okay, what are the skills that, you know, I need in, in the current uh, position that I was, let alone if I wanted to grow horizontally or vertically, what are the skills that I should focus on in order to, uh, you know, do that growth. And, and so uh, Talbot is sort of a result of that. Uh, I, I realized during my MBA studies at the Aldo uh, University that um, this is actually what I'm passionate about. This, the, the, it's a broken system that needs to be fixed and, and that's what we're fixing. I'm Canadian, uh, lived in Finland for most of my life now, uh, mother of three children uh, who are young adults. So my baby is 17, so they're slowly but surely already uh, creating their own paths in life. Uh, and I also have a small dog. Uh, so I'm a dog mommy also, but that's me. Great to be here. Yeah, great to hear from all of you. And I think then from that, uh, I've already written some notes on some questions to ask uh, all of you. But I think from my own experience, I like when I joined the startup ecosystem, it was one way. And then throughout like those years, things have changed. Uh, and before putting my own commentary there, I wanted to ask uh, all of you, like um, from the time that you guys have joined this, uh, what have been like the perceptions of the startup tech world that you had before you entered it? And what has been like the sort of like the pivotal moment that really motivated you to take your first step to building your own startup? Well, I can uh, start so that we go on the same order. <laughs> Um, well, actually, I've, be, I've come to the tech and startup world quite recently. Um, and I still, when I think back, like, what's, what was my perception? So it was mainly that men work with tech and, and that the startup um, hustle is like mostly for young tech men, which is quite unfortunate because we need to have role models so that we can uh, like go to the same direction but then but then at the same time i've always liked to go a little bit different way not the way that it's expected so i thought it's just like a nice challenge um and actually like if i look back when i really like what was the moment that i became like from a doc only a doctor something to entrepreneurial it was when i started my own instagram account and that was because i i saw that there's a need for information for women and i just wanted to do it more effectively than what i did earlier as a doctor uh, i met patients one by one and part of the work of course there's a lot of other parts but Part of the work is educate woman by woman, every patient to always educate something about how their body works. So I wanted to do that more efficiently. So now when I look back, I noticed that that was the moment I didn't really know what I where I wanted to go or what was my goal more than sharing information more eff efficiently. But I see that that was the moment when I started to think that I need to do something a bit different.
Yes, uh, Helen or Kaiser, do you have any opinions on that? Well, I can go, we'll uh, mess up the, the order a little bit here. Um, for me, I mean, uh, coming from the IT background, uh, I, it really never, um, I never thought of it from that perspective. Uh, I think there was an equal or let's say a diverse uh, uh, sort of group of people that I, I worked with. Um, and, uh, but of course, uh, once I entered and I started participating in these different events, um, I, I did notice um, the, the lack of diversity. But I guess I was more or less like passionate about uh, starting to, you know, build a team, uh, finding people who are passionate about this. And um, uh, obviously, you know, at some point I was like, well, I want to find other than um, male software developers. But at the time, uh, you know, that was sort of uh, where the majority of the, the software developers were. And, and since I don't do any programming, I had to find those in, in order to build that platform. Uh, so um, I guess my perception is a little bit different, but uh, definitely um, I've, I've grown to see this uh, throughout the years that it is still lopsided. Um, there's there's way too many, too little, um, uh, let's say, diversity in in general in the tech startup communities. And um, yeah, maybe a few words of that later on. Yeah, I've, um, like maybe two times in the startup world. I I joined it 15 years ago. And uh, then I, I founded several companies and then I was working in a bigger company for a while and then I came back to the startup world. So I have kind of two different eras when I have joined that uh, uh, scene. And things have, things have changed a lot. Uh, 15 years ago, there was about two other women on uh, uh, in the startup scene as tech CEOs. And uh, it was really lonely. And uh, it was a big decision for me then to become a tech CEO. Of course, now still, it's very like, a, it's still not the same level that we have women, but back then there wasn't at all. So I've seen the kind of positive change that we've been experiencing. And, and uh, I felt the first time, like I, I was looking for role models in Finland. I. I had a lot of like thinking, I was uh, then 24, so I had a lot of thinking about like, how should, how, how should I look look like? How should I behave? Uh, should I be somehow different? Should I be uh, acting more like a guy or how should I be? Because I was so different like in, in that crowd. But I guess like, well, things have changed uh, since, since then. And, uh, but maybe like um, in both of these times, um, kind of this perception that I had was that I, I have always thought that things are easier. It has always been very difficult uh, to build a startup. And uh, so I had this kind of a, uh, perception of like, it's going to be easy and nice and fun. And of course, like ups and downs, but it always shocks when you start a new company, how, much, how difficult it actually is. And, uh, and oh, how lonely it is. I, I was lonely back then. I still feel because of the CEO role, I think the same loneliness is for all the CEOs. There are so many things that you can't talk about. And uh, so it's, it's, although you have the team, in many cases, you are quite lonely. And then, uh, Mar uh, Margaret, you had a question like, uh, what was the moment that made me jump into the startup world because 15 years it was not a typical path i was told from many people that you're ruining, ruining your life to go to this path um, but i think it has been kind of three things and one thing has been intuition that i just need to do this like i it's it's for me i i just need to do it and um or intuition of the events, what are what are going to happen? Like if I go to this path, what will happen? And the kind of vision, visioning the future. So intuition is one, but then also 
just that I, I had to do it. I, I didn't have any other options. I, I felt like if I wouldn't jump into a new company, and this has been like every time, is that I will regret it so much. And then a little bit similar to what Kia was also saying is the kind of attitude or feeling that you want to change the world for, for better. So that has been always there. Like I can make a difference. I can make a change and I want to be the change and part of the change. So those three things have been always these kind of moments and they have always been into this one particular time where you can kind of link to it that you have made the decision of moving forward. Yeah, it's really like refreshing to hear from all three of you, like the different perspectives of that. And I think that like uh, all of you have a lot of validity in what you have mentioned. And as I always say, like it's, the best founders are those that have been driven by the intuition and the vision of what they are really going to be working on. And it's good to kind of see what you got, you all are gonna work on and really develop along the years. Um, but I wanna go back to something that maybe Kia said, um, which then would lead to the next question that I have, uh, which is this whole tech bro narrative. Uh, and then like I working with startups for some time now, I myself admit that um, when I thought about what a startup is and working in the tech world, it was very much, it's a male dominated industry. And if I don't have this extensive knowledge of like coding or software development, that like there's no place for me in that, in that place. But I now over the years have really uh, happily found out that that's not really the case. And I actually wanted to see from many other people, like has what are the like the common myths of starting or working in a startups that you think uh, many female founders encounter themselves? I think maybe Kia can go. I can, I can start again. Uh, well, some uh, from the latest year that we've encountered some um, well, I don't know if they are myths, but at least we have encountered this, is that women are not that good at talking business, talking money, talking finance. Uh, so we have been asked, like, who is going to take care of our finance, even if, if we have founders that have background from the, um, like, business and economy. And so no men would get this question and that's not like the first uh, first biggest issue to encounter so that's like really interesting and then um, uh, also that women can't work together or that they will have these cat fights or something or that they are not that I don't know productive or something so we've really got these questions like well how do you how do you solve your um, uh, disagreements or how do you work together since you are we are only women we are four women that have uh, founded the company and our CTO who is the fifth is also a woman so that's what we have um, encountered that we like just unnecessary time to go or explain to someone that we couldn't like how can you manage your uh, differences or so. I, oh, okay, Helena, you can, oh, yeah, do you want to go can. now? Okay. Um, I haven't uh, received any direct uh, questions such as Gia mentioned. I've, I've talked to a lot of uh, female founders uh, who've had this experience. I think um, some of my experiences have been kind of hidden, uh, whereas, you know, if I've been talking to, to a VC, um, it's been kind of like this teacher student type of a situation where um, I can't pinpoint and say for sure that, uh, you know, it's because I'm female, um, but uh, I've definitely been in situations where you know, arriving into that conversation, I thought I was the one who was going to be running through my pitch deck, explaining, you know, kind of pitching, uh, but uh, in a in in pitching and conversing uh, about it. Whereas uh, the 
VC has taken a complete lead and, and literally like 95% of the time just like talked. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that was strange. Um, and, and I felt like uh, after that call that uh, I know very little and thus uh, this person had to, had to do this uh, to me, which made me extremely angry. Um, following those uh, steps, you know, this uh, particular VC has uh, mentioned that, you know, diversity and, and um, unconscious biases are things that they're really working on and they, they want to support uh, female tech founders. Well, it's a lot of nice talk and, and, and unfortunately I've seen that there's very little action. Um, and it comes out in small things, you know, they, they arrange like a founder day um, and there's 10 speakers and they're all white males. And it's like, okay, so you couldn't find in your network um, people who are non-white uh, male to come and present these certain topics that you've chosen for for the um, for the day. So they're they're sort of like subtle things that uh, when when you come as a diverse uh, person into this this whole community, you start looking at things from a different perspective, and then you start you know, kind of putting uh, one and one together. Um, but I do have to mention at this point, because I'm, I'm part of the Tech Nordic Advocates uh, program. And, um, and I think, yeah, you're, you're part of it also. Isn't that true? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. okay Unless my... I've missed it. <laughs> no, okay. Sorry. Uh, it, it's it's someone else then. But and nevertheless, so um, we had like a side event uh, at Slush last year and I was sitting in the panel and, and we were talking about concrete actions that can be made so that, you know, uh, the numbers of, uh, for example, the VC money that's uh, going into uh, female founded uh, tech companies would be something else than, you know, under 2% or 2.2%, whatever the number is at the moment. And, um, uh, and, and we were discussing like, uh, like what are the concrete uh, actions that we can take? We had a small crowd uh, there and, and we, there were great ideas and, and things going on. And then as we go out, uh, there's two uh, older men uh, that, that leave uh, the, the room. They were listening there. And immediately when they step out, they're like, rah, 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 rah. you know, like th they were pissed off about the conversations that were going on in there. And, and sort of like, you know, these females are, are sensitive and, and this and that. And, and I had to stop them. And I'm like, really? Is this really what you have to say after, you know, us trying to find concrete ways to to kind of break this uh, very much uh, problematic situation. So um, in a sense, you know, I've I haven't been in the middle of it, but I've kind of sensed it around uh, and, and we need to speak up. Uh, we need to, uh, you know, kind of educate these people that this is not OK. Um, and, and you need to find a, a, a more um, diverse panel in a sense but i think this also goes both ways uh, i i totally understand we're talking about women in tech right now we have a a, a female panel here but uh, moving forward i think it's it's all of our responsibility to think about these things through more diverse lenses in in order to uh, be able to change and be that change Yeah, really, really good, uh, good points from both of you. Um, fifteen years ago, uh, I, I sound I sound so old, but fifteen years ago, it it was much more difficult for me. Um, I was considered sometimes as a secretary, like in the meetings. Although I was a CEO, and when they heard that I was the CEO, they totally changed. And it was kind of I thought back then I thought it was kind of interesting because I I was just kind of looking and how they behaved and. And yeah, but uh, now uh, in the past years, I I haven't had any experience that I would have thought that I that people would have like uh, acted differently uh, towards me. Um, I have never experienced any uh, comments um, regarding 
like um, do we need finance uh, like some person uh, who would have exp more experience in financing or investing or or so uh, when i started the uh, investors asked that uh, why do don't we have a cto and i thought it, it I thought it wasn't because of me. It was a good question because we were a tech company and I, I didn't have a partner C CTO. Um, but I think like one thing that I, I keep on seeing because I work with a lot of entrepreneurs uh, all the time who are creating pitch decks and, and so on is that often women are like, if we write the goals, we don't want to exaggerate and like put really like super big goals we are more like yeah this week can kind of manage and uh and then if investors get these pitch decks of like two different companies one is saying like we will be a billion com a billion euro company and then the the other one says like yeah we will be one million then two and then five ten then it's it, it's like a negotiations and the situation is very very different i have seen this in the corporate world uh, when uh, I was presenting budgets, I was always very realistic. And on the board meeting, I always felt so bad because I was so realistic, but we managed to get there. And then, but then there were other people saying like, yeah, extra millions from there and here. And the boards is like, yeah, great. And then like, uh, I have, uh, I took negotiation <laughs> lessons and I have started to really all the time think like how to make how to think bigger, how to think bigger and not like try to think smaller. And also how many of us women present us, we need to have gates and everything. And just today I was sparring one entrepreneur and she was saying like, yeah, I, I, I have been like a teacher in the past and, and she had on the pitch deck like that. And although she has already been an entrepreneur for a long time, she has grown the business and done so many different things, but it was somehow for her like difficult to see it. Um, yeah, maybe one thing um, also worth mentioning is that often there is this perception that women like startups are less successful. But if you look at the data, women are, are more successful. And I, I'm, I'm super happy that nowadays we have these communities and, and like what Kaisa was explaining that we talk about these things because we didn't talk about those things 15 years ago. We didn't have any women for the panel. <laughs> like there weren't any. So like three in Finland, maybe. But yeah, so I think there is a positive chance. It's it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. I had a, a similar conversation with someone uh, during Slash and it was based on the whole like line of, okay, uh, we are not seeing any change coming like in the next years and like there's still a few of like there's still not as many female founders as we would want based on the goals that we have set how many years ago and everything and my my opinion there was that I remember when I came into this that they were at, as you said Helen well I wasn't like 15 years ago but maybe five or like yeah five years ago that it wasn't so many people and I've seen the change uh, it's just something that happens it doesn't happen overnight it just happens like gradually and people have to put like the effort towards uh actually driving it there and i think a lot of these initiatives are like the first steps to get it there and but maybe going back to a previous comment that you had which was the whole loneliness aspect uh and i've seen this uh time and time again in the ecosystem um with a lot of like the success that a lot of like males have within startups is based on the connections that they have and the networks that they build and then how they actually um, use these networks to like advantage them or benefit them. Uh, and then in my opinion, uh, I think that the mentorship is very crucial and it's like for personal growth and like the whole development. Um, but could you share like maybe like a story about how like what sort of like mentorship you think is significant or can create a significant impact on the journey of many female founders and what sort of like guidance has shaped your entrepreneurial path? Like and this goes then to anyone. I can start now. Um, well, uh, first of all, I, I do have to uh, applaud the startup community. Uh, I think there's a very, very like sort of 
uh, openness and, and people want to help others uh, in, in their journey. And, and that's one of the lessons that I learned uh, after talking with uh, one of the Nona find founders, uh, Yanni Ahonala. Uh, he was the one that really taught me the fact that uh, when we were uh, talking about uh, Talbot and, and startup journeys in general, um, I felt this like I owe him something that, you know, he's given me great advice and, and helped me. And he said, I felt the same. And then I figured out that uh, the, the mentors and coaches don't necessarily want any payment or, or uh, you know, this type of uh, repayment back, but rather that you then go and help people who are in, in maybe their earlier uh, phases of their journey. And, and so that was one very, very essential learning. Uh, uh, for me, and I've been happy uh, to coach. I, I've been mentoring uh, some some startups in the Tech Nordic Advocate uh, program, and and then also outside of it. So uh, it's it's been a pleasure, and and I believe I also learn uh, when I am mentoring and coaching others uh, because it is a conversation. Um, uh, one of our VCs is Sofocus Ventures, um, and and uh, Turo Nominen especially. Uh, he's uh, a, a beautiful, beautiful coach uh, for us. He's he, and, and a mentor, um, uh, and we've had great conversations on on many things. He's helped with the option plans. He's helped with, you know, the advisory agreements, uh, etc. But then uh, there's there's a, a million others out there that have helped me, and um, you know, the the greatest thank you goes to my wife who's been, uh, you know, has done uh, the startup journey and, and has done an exit. And, and if it wasn't for her, um, I don't know where I, wa I would be. So uh, I guess my biggest shout out goes to her. Yeah, I can continue. Well, I've also, and we also, we all in, uh, in Cisco, we have noticed and been like so positively surprised with this startup community um how how we support each other and how we've gotten help and everybody wants to talk and give advice and they are truly interested and want to share their stories and that has really been a super positive uh, experience and there's many people who have like helped us continuously and had talks with us and supported in in different fields uh, during this building a startup but i also have this one like mentorship um, story from my doctor years which really like is the core somehow that i i carry with me and this was a, a senior doctor that i worked with who was doing surgeries for pelvic floor and that's something like um, uh, after birth when women have pelvic floor uh, trauma after delivery and that has been something that people had have not talked about earlier and that was a great taboo and uh, in Sweden she came and changed the whole thing At, back then it was like male doctors mostly and she just came her way and talked that this needs to change these women need uh, better care their sexuality needs to be like lifted and they earn better life quality and then she was like with all of this like sharing this passion with us younger doctors and always like teaching and always taking us with her and like showing and teaching so that we would become top uh, professionals and lifted younger people and that was like something where my passion for like the core somehow for this uh, what I want to change also comes from and that's like that somebody with like in a male dominated field that wants to change something even if it's a taboo you just need to talk and work your way through this and talk about these things and and also like for women's health which is of course my passion 
so that that women deserve good health and sexuality and so that's like something that i carry with me like this raising others um i just got some <laughs> note from a window that i need to send some <laughs> some tickets to my kids sorry but um yeah that's um that's my background story but of course we've got a lot of help from other founders and that's amazing yeah i agree the community is, is great you get a lot of help and uh advisors and in my, during my career or my path i've ha had several advisors and mentors um the best mentor that i have had has had two kind of main qualities or like uh that I'm always looking after if I, I would be now looking for a new mentor, but I don't need to because I have this one older, older man who is helping me, but is that he has expertise and skills and he has seen many different things. So has this kind of a knowledge, but then the other half is about empathy. So when things are really tough, you don't necessarily need somebody just to say like, you need to do this and that but you need somebody who supports you and like helps you. So um, I have had also these advisors and mentors who are like nice when things go well, but then when things don't go so well, they don't understand it and they're not supporting. And I always try when I'm, I'm doing mentoring or I'm also becoming actually a coach, uh, I'm gonna graduate, graduate next Monday. But uh, what I try to do is to kind of, uh, I think people as a whole, not just like a business person, but more about talk about feelings and uh, and uh, yeah, like how happy they actually are. And uh, one time there was a situation and where I I had just like way too much work and I couldn't cope with like a couple of tasks. And then the advisor was saying like, you just didn't want to do it. And I was like, no, I wanted to do it, but I couldn't. I was like too busy. No, don't lie to me. You just didn't want to do it. And it it was like horrible. I, I was like shocked because I thought that we had this kind of deeper connection. So now if I would go out and look for a mentor who will support you during several years, I would look for those kind of two sides of the person. Yeah, I've, uh, I've encountered many startups and it's often a bit how do i put it not alarming but maybe a bit of like a, a warning when the person also as a founder maybe doesn't um really appreciate a lot of like the support and empathy that goes into it because like yes when you're doing well uh you don't really i think you are on top of the world and you think that like yeah everything's going right but when things really go the other way it is that that type of mentor that's really going to sit down and listen to what are like sort of like the where, why are you hitting the wall uh, and trying to understand the deeper like un, like feeling that you are going through and just really try and uh, get you out of that uh, mental fog or anything and then may, may, like move on from there. But then I think one like the advice that you gave Helen it was one one good strategy of how to really overcome those challenges. But then I wanted to ask all of you. Uh, and I think then Kaiser, you can go with this. Like, what do you think are like some good strategies or that you have maybe employed uh, to overcome the challenges uh, and achieve your goals as a startup founder? Well, for me, uh, I guess one of the foundations uh, were uh, built during my MBA studies because I was able to take a couple courses on actually founding a company. So we, we had a, a, a course called a uh, new venture workshop where we really dove deep into the business model canvas. Uh, we studied a startup uh, and, and so uh, once, you know, the, the idea was cooking in my head, I already had some tools in my, my toolbox. Um, but then uh, obviously, you know, talking uh, to, to people, understanding uh, what needs to be done, uh, reading some books, uh, reading some blogs uh, and, and such were, were obviously ways to, to move forward. Um, 
but then also like uh, once we got Talbot up and running uh, because we, we do supply uh, ready-made job profiles in there. So I was actually able to choose like a chief executive officer uh, job profile. And then I understood um, what are the skills that I should have. And, and so it kind of came to a, a more concrete and tangible thing rather than, you know, having like, I need to take care of finances. I need to take care of this. I need to take care of investor relations. If I need to know how to create a pitch deck. And, and so improving those skills, uh, you know, one by one kind of gave me that clarity, what I needed and, and sort of like, okay, you know, I'll just focus on a few things uh, where I need to, to learn and, and grow. And then of course, you know, try to uh, somehow handle the, the other workload in, in, a, in a somehow sensible way. Um, it's easier said than done. Um, and uh, I guess uh, my advice is get a dog and, and make sure you get like one or two walks in the forest during the day in order to, you know, decrease your stress level. But um, yeah, those are my two cents. Yeah, maybe, maybe I can go next. Um, uh, I think, uh, well, every week is a, is a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. So I, I think in a startup world, it, there's never an easy week. At least I can't re recall now that I would have had ever an easy week. And there's always things to do, always new things to do and learn. And, and uh, I think kind of this attitude that you are never ready and accepting that and also accepting that you can't do perfect things uh so you you shouldn't spend time on like really working on like super detail of course sometimes it's it's relevant but most often it's just that like in your head that you want to do things in a like super detailed way uh, i think for me what has helped a lot are okrs so have like clear objectives and key results or goals or kpis where you can every day kind of think, do I, does this really like, uh, does this uh, move me forward to achieve my goals or objectives? So that has been for me uh, important. Uh, I think also one challenge that I, I think I have always had, and many people find it very like maybe surprising, but every, every week I'm afraid so I'm somehow afraid of doing new things and like it's my personality. So every week I'm afraid, but I'm bold enough to do it. So kind of although you're afraid you're doing things, uh, if I, I wouldn't do things because I'm afraid, I, I wouldn't be an entrepreneur and I wouldn't have done so many things. So I think when you're pushing yourself to the limits, you're always a little bit scared. And um uh, one thing that I am currently also working with are the the emotions that uh, somehow I feel like being an entrepreneur, I take many things often personally, like too personally. I'm learning it, but still I'm, I'm trying to learn it more that I wouldn't have so many feelings about different things and like that I could more focus just on the action than really like the feelings. And the last thing that I, I would like to mention is um, that babies and startups are a difficult combination. Unfortunately, uh, I've been having two two babies with a young young company. With the first one, I I'm, I was only uh, three months uh, home, and then my husband was nine months. So in in Finland, we we usually have like women are nine months or six months, and guys are like or the other partner is like three months or, or six months. So I think it, it still bothers me a little bit that I was able to only be three months away with the first one. The second one, we split six, six months and six months. But it, it, it was difficult. And uh, I, I would always kind of suggest that. Ah, yeah, sorry. Besides that, one difficult thing is always if you're a solo founder. So that I don't recommend. And I started Prana as a solo founder. Everybody was saying, don't do it. I was even saying to me, don't do it. But I couldn't find a good founder uh, back then. So I just decided to move forward. But maybe those are some of the lesson lessons that I've been, been having. 
and challenges? Uh, well, there were many things that I uh, I agree with, and especially this. Um, well, there's always like I feel like you're almost always on your uncomfortable zone, but in a way, I love it. So just uh, so that you can do and this that you can do things even if you're scared or even if you have anxiety. You decide to do it, even if you are afraid. That's a really good good advice. Um, then also, also like I heard this good uh, advice that startup life is always like up and down. So if you're having a really bad day, then you know that you are or a bad week or a month, then you know that you are down and you are going to get up. So I think that's like a really nice okay. It's fine this is the way it's going to be today is a bad day so next day is going to be a better day and then also um what we have done is that we talk our our team we just talk uh together uh try to think like go back a little bit think what is the what is the next goal we want to achieve and uh, like helena said like what's the thing that moves the, moves the needle what to do next because many times these uh, bigger goals they feel so big like what is the next thing and if there's like some obstacles then just starting from small things that takes the work forward um, and then always also i think that doing other stuff is so important like just doing other things than work um whatever it's so that works for for each one but um and also like trying to maybe have some routines because having being an entrepreneur is like working often in the in the evening and and weekends and so on but having like something that i have my yoga on mondays during lunch and i don't take any meetings that time having like some things that I need to prioritize myself so that I can be a good founder. Yeah, setting up like uh, limits and boundaries. Yeah. That's also a thing that I'm working on and, and uh, currently and continuously. And it's not just setting up boundaries or, or limits as a like entrepreneur, but also for your own life, like to friendships and, and, and everything. What are the limits? It's a really good practice to like work on yeah because it's it's not easy to shut down um this doesn't apply only to startup founders or or uh, but uh, i think more for ceos and of course uh, founders you you're so respond you're you're responsible for so many things and and um you know you're climbing up that mountain and you have no idea uh, how high that mountain is you just need to keep climbing uh, whether you fall down scratch your knees you have to get up and 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 keep going so really focusing on on well-being and and because we all know that when when that goes crooked uh, you're not good for anyone and um but it's it's one of the things that so many of us neglect and and you, at least for myself it's been kind of like you know I literally almost uh, had to arrive to the fact that I need to get a dog in order to get those like breaks in the woods. It sounds stupid and, and crazy, but um, sometimes you just kind of glow down the, the rabbit hole and, and you just kind of slide, slide, <laughs> keep sliding without really pausing to, to ask yourself, is this like the, the route you want to really take? And I just feel like somehow also this discussion that women like when I come back to this, like uh, how female founders are like uh, how we are thought that we are, then I also think that when we discuss about these things and we more often discuss about how to combine with family and so this is like seen as some kind of weakness that we talk openly that we need to have a balance that you need to do other things in life also 
And even if I think that's a really positive and strong thing in a person that you can talk and set your boundaries, then I think it's so crazy that that's like seen as a weakness somehow. Yeah, I I was going to bring up the whole topic of motherhood. uh, And it's great that then you mentioned it, or uh, all three of you have mentioned it. Um, In my experience, the conversation of motherhood and startup founders is something that, as you said, uh, if it is brought up, it's kind of highlighted as a weakness. But then at the same time, there also seems to be this prevalence of um, looking up towards the the founders that, hey, like she like completely just put her family on the side and was this boss mother and she the boss businesswoman and she got things done. And I often find that it might be a bit toxic um, because it's not a one size fits all situation. There are mothers who uh, give birth and are able to hop back up on their feet and get things moving. And then there are others that maybe that might not be the case. And if we are promoting that type of lifestyle, it might be a bit disingenuous uh, to what exactly happens. And I wanted to like ask you guys, uh, seeing that you're all women and uh, have then had experiences with kids, like, uh, from a female founder perspective, like what would be like your advice uh, for any other person, like if they were considering actually being a mom and at the same time uh, pursuing the whole uh, founder uh, path? Yeah, maybe I can start. Um, um, it's a it's a personal thing, so you need to find your own own way of doing it. And uh, it's not like one fits for all. Uh, listen to yourself, but you also need to listen to the kid because you never know who's going to come to the world, like what kind of personality. Some kids might be really chilled out and others might uh, require like a lot of attention and so on. So find your own ways and don't look at, or you can read about different types of mothers and look for different types of people and, and then just make your own plan. Um, before I became a mother for with the first kid, I, I bought a book about like entrepreneur mom or something. And it was really silly, to be honest, the whole book. But it, it kind of I was in trouble at the moment, like thinking, uh, wh- how should I think about it? So I would just have conversations, meet with other people and then just find your own unique way and don't copy anybody else's way. Like in life in general, that would be my tip. Yeah, I can uh, tell from my perspective. Uh, well, I have two kids. Uh, they are uh, five and seven. And uh, so I haven't had like really small kids when I've had a company. Um, so I think it's, it works well. Uh, like, well, I have, I compare this to a doctor's job where I have worked a lot of night shifts and 24 hour shifts and been away from home quite a lot. And my spouse has been like fixing the family and so on. So I experienced this change as quite, uh, quite nice to be able to sleep during the night and then being with the kids when they are having breakfast and taking them to school and then working during the day and evening. So for me, it's a bit difficult to like uh, compare, but there are so many different ways to work and, and, um, combinations how to how to fix the the everyday life with kids but I'm actually quite um, uh, unhappy to hear Helena's um, uh, story that it's not not recommended to have a baby when you're a startup founder I think it's very unfortunate and I mean I can imagine I mean I can relate that um it's not maybe easy to be at home for a very long time if you're a, a new startup founder, but that's uh, something we should like work on how to make that more possible. Maybe one comment for that is, is that also it depends on the team. Like if you have four founders, it's much easier than if you're kind of solo founder. If you're a solo founder, that you would don't necessarily have a business after after like the like uh, after ma- um, maternity leave so yeah. 
it, it, it's like uh, things are very, uh, very different and uh, in what type of organization and what it's the your unique like situation. But in my case, I was solo founder, so it was three months and yeah, I was, yeah, it was, it was difficult. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. Um, uh, I'm, I'm probably the oldest mom in a sense, since my baby will be 17 in, in September. And, and I, you know, I don't know if I have anything to add to uh, both Helena's and Gia's uh, beautiful comments. Um, you, you design it uh, your, yourself, but I guess uh, my two cents would be, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, it, each family uh, is, is unique in a sense and, and um, you know, finding ways within the family, you know, your spouse, partner, whoever, uh, who can pitch in uh, because uh, uh, you know it's it's important. Uh, being a mom could be a you know full day job. Uh, being a founder is a full day job, and and combining that, uh, of course, uh, can be challenging. Uh, it's doable, I'm sure. I haven't been a founder when I when my children were small, so I, I can't speak to that. Uh, but. Um, yeah, I think voicing your your opinion and talking to others and figuring out your own path uh, that way also learning from others and and how they've managed. Uh, there are quite a few babies in in the startup community in Finland. I'm sure, you know, if there's someone out there, and I believe the same uh, for for other countries. Uh, you know, reach out to people. Uh, as said, uh, the my experience uh, whenever I've. Uh, met with startup founders, uh, they're all very helpful. Um, they, they want to help. They want you to sort of uh, not do all the mistakes that they've uh, potentially done. Uh, everyone will make them and that's part of the, the growth and, and your journey, but you don't have to do every single one of them. So find um, someone who's had a small baby and, and um, you know, just bounce ideas and, and figure out your own path but i just have to add that i think there are quite many pros also having kids and being an entrepreneur so because you can um, plan your days a bit more freely it's quite more flexible than having like a set nine to five day job then one uh, kind of side note uh, my my son is 20 and he's very interested in in um startups in general so uh the what i get to do now is you know uh, listen to his ideas challenge him uh, you know how many customers have you talked to who's willing to pay for that product uh, do you have a software developer so once they you know grow up and 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 they start having their own ideas it, it's it becomes so much fun yeah uh, we have one question from the chat, uh, and the person asked, "So, how do we ensure that the startups, uh, the startups, are designing for other, like the other fifty-one percent of the human population, in this case, women, um, with startups, and back it up with governance?" Just so I'm guessing the person is asking about how do we ensure that the startups who are not women uh, or led are designing for women in mind and what sort of like governments or policies can we kind of push for so that we are kept in mind in that case, I imagine. Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, it all like, it all has to happen within like, uh, I think, um, you know, you, you, you can create governmental policies. I'm not sure if the this sort of stick works in, in all, it's, it's, it's a tricky question, but um, uh, for example, myself, I, I mentioned the, the um, founders day or uh, where, where it was like a all male panel. I didn't go, I voiced my opinion. I said, it's not okay. I don't believe that you could not find from your network um more, like diverse uh, speakers for for these topics i'm not coming 
and and so that hopefully you know um, creates some sort of ability to overcome that unconscious bias. Uh, so I think we need to voice uh, these types of uh, and and bring them to to life, uh, bring them to the surface. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, we also have to be examples uh, because you know once you're able to showcase the fact that you're catering to a larger audience that most likely uh, will generate better revenues for you and um, organizations that are leading sort of the, the, the they're the rock stars in your industry um, people want to follow them and and when they start recognizing that okay what are they doing differently uh, hopefully that change also happens internally Yeah, I, I agree with guys, and uh, I think uh, um, one thing that I have seen lately when we, when we have been applying these governmental funds has been just the question of like uh, um, gender and and so on. So there has been some kind of like quotas or goals uh, for that. Um, I'm not into kind of quotas myself for for various reasons. Um, I would hope that we would get like uh, more women for boards, for example. But in some cases, if the change doesn't happen too fast, then I think it's it might be the only only way. But I think it's good that um, there would be more discussion about having women on the events, uh, having maybe other supportive groups um, for women. So that would be probably my um, my my thinking yeah i don't really have anything to add to those thoughts yeah i think i might uh close off with one question and the question was directed to kaiser but everyone uh feel free also to add your uh perspective there um, so, Kaisa, you at Talbot have focused on individual and organizational development and uh, seeing how things work so fast in the startup ecosystem. And there is a unique like uh, ability for people to really maximize their, their growth and skills. Um, do you think that there is more freedom and opportunities uh, to grow and learn as females in the startup, in the startup ecosystem? Um, as opposed to then in a traditional like organizational setting. I don't know if I have like a full answer to that. Um, and, and I have to base it on my own experience because I don't have any any research to back that up. Uh, in, in general, um, I think startups are, are more diverse and, and more open. We see that, for example, with uh, non-Finnish employees, uh, they're more open to employing uh, non-Finnish, non-Finnish uh, speaking uh, people into the startups. And um, uh, when you join a startup, you obviously, uh, it, 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 you have to be, accept messiness which means that there's not like strict roles uh, necessarily or job descriptions. Uh, you, you have to be kind of a Jack or Jill of all trades uh, in a sense. And, and thus it is a great platform for growth. Um, I don't think I've ever experienced myself uh, that uh, my growth has stopped because I'm a female. Um, there have been other structures uh, preventing that uh, from my, my perspective. So, uh, but I, I, I do know that uh, being in Finland, uh, where, where my sort of work experience is from, um, organizations are still, you know, a little bit uh, lacking this kind of diversity. Um, they, they, many of them require Finnish language uh, as, as, um, as a skill that you need to have. And that of course, uh, you know, leaves out a whole lot of potential talent. And when we're thinking in, in these types of terms, it, it does raise the question that, okay, 
who has the the potential to grow in your organization um so all in all after this kind of uh, bubbly here and there i would say that the startups do offer a better uh, platform for female and and diverse uh, people to grow Okay, thank you, Kaiser, for the answer. I think that was really great. And then I have the last two questions, which is then one for Kia and then one for Helena. Um, the one for Kia is based on her previous background as a gynecologist um, and also like your good amount of Instagram following. Uh, and how do you feel that your previous experience has really contributed to your entrepreneurial journey? Well, um, I've worked quite a long time as a doctor uh, and in a, in a hospital world, world, really, that is like its own world. And I have quite a strong, um, like a doctor's identity, which I'm sure, or I think it's a little bit different from many other uh professions because it's like it goes with me everywhere because i need to be like i need to be able to help people i, I mean i can't just shut down so somehow that uh, that comes with, with me quite strongly wherever i go uh, even if i like totally uh, go forward as an entrepreneur the rest of my life um and then this um this well I, well what i i worked with uh, women so I, since i'm a gynecologist and nowadays where i worked uh, there were basically only female doctors so i've worked with female patients uh, with female colleagues so i've really been surrounded with or by uh, only women basically so this uh, tech world is in that way totally new like in, in that way also and then this um well this instagram um side i think that's like brought quite a lot of this entrepreneurial entrepreneurial think for me like in some way i started that like with this thought that i need to do something more efficiently uh, which is like, which I'm continuing with, with Cisco basically. Uh, and then also like in that way, I started to examine uh, more like, what is the pain? Why do these people want this information? And what is the biggest uh, information gaps and biggest taboos and so on? So somehow that like brought me a bit softly uh, to this um, startup and and that's something that I really think I'm, I'm still using a lot and getting this information and, and using that, that with, uh, with Cisco. So that's, that's what I think. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, I had, even though I had worked with you, I was not aware of the Instagram following that you have. And that was um, to really bring people up to speed and create awareness. It was a really good, uh, like, tool to have uh, in your back pocket um, and it's always good to kind of keep people updated there and then I think the last question and we'll close off with this uh, from Helena and it's funny because we throughout this whole session we've talked about the the vast experience that you that you've had like from the early years of the startup world till now and uh, I just want to then maybe close off like from your startup student days till now um, what are the significant changes uh, or shifts that you have observed in the industry uh, and what like opportunities do you see moving forward for a lot of female founders The biggest changes has been uh, we have more more women uh, on the scene. I think the sustainability angle is there much more than it was in the past, and also this value-driven, purpose-driven uh, attitude. I think the community is, is much uh, bigger. <laughs> this, is, this is Uno. And, uh, and then I think we're also in like moving in a now in a 
to another kind of a big era of, of the AI. So there will be a lot of different changes in the in the startup scene. And there are more role models and uh, more people to connect with and discuss with and, and learn from. And I see that the current startup scene is much better than it was 15 years ago. Yeah, I'm glad to hear. And uh, then just to close off, uh, thank you to everyone who was on the panel and then thank you to everyone who was adding their comments uh, throughout the chat. I hope that this was a um, valuable and uh, enlightening uh, session for everyone. And as Helena said, uh, I hope that the next years really brings a lot of uh, development in terms of female founders and uh, just keeping my thumbs crossed that each and every one of you then uh, develops the next unicorn uh, with the, your different companies. But otherwise, uh, thanks everyone for being on the call and then uh, everyone, thanks for being on the women, Untold Stories of Women in Tech. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Wishing Thank you, you all so best of luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.